October 1929. Panic sweeps the nation as the stock market on Wall Street collapses. Soon, the entire country will be plunged into the Great Depression. Ripples from Wall Street's failure would overtake America's industry. Factories shut their doors, businesses folded, and the coal mines that were the economic backbone of Middle Tennessee would close forever. Thousands of local miners and textile mill workers were left without jobs. Families throughout the region looked to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt for hope. FDR knew what to do. His idea? The New Deal. An economic recovery plan costing nearly a billion dollars. To help Americans get back on their feet, Roosevelt's New Deal created dozens of new government agencies. The Resettlement Administration was established to help jobless communities build small farms and plant crops. Business owners in Crossville, Tennessee took action. With the help of their congressmen, they lobbied to bring much needed economic aid to Middle Tennessee. The Resettlement Administration saw great potential for the region. And in 1934, it launched the Cumberland Homesteads Project. The promise of a new start brought applicants from all over the area. Over 1,500 families would apply for the 251 homesteads that would be built. Applicants had to meet rigid standards of integrity, honesty, and a willingness to work with government agencies. The houses were built using locally cut crab orchard sandstone, giving them a distinctive look and tying them to the land from which they arose. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt insisted the homes be furnished with indoor plumbing. Each house was wired for electricity, which the Tennessee Valley Authority would bring a few years later. But the hardworking families living in the Cumberland homesteads needed a place for relaxation, recreation, and good old-fashioned fun. A place that would reflect the natural beauty of the Cumberland Plateau. A park was needed, but who would take on such a daunting task in such a remote part of the country? Once again, Roosevelt's New Deal had the answer, the Civilian Conservation Corps. The CCC employed young men and veterans, providing food, shelter, and a purpose to build a new infrastructure for America. The Civilian Conservation Corps was organized like the military, with units armed with shovels instead of rifles. These civilian volunteers were led by army commanders, fighting fires, planting trees, and building a nationwide system of parks. On May 25, 1935, members of the CCC's 34-64th Company arrived near the Cumberland Homesteads. Led by Captain Joseph Holland, the company faced an untamed land. The men got to work creating a base camp for the CCC's new enrollees, the camp would include barracks, a mess hall, a medical infirmary, and everything the workers would need for both comfort and entertainment. Dozens of enrollees from Cumberland County made their way to the new CCC camp. According to Army reports, the new recruits showed a willingness and an ability to work which was amazing. These Tennessee volunteers would be essential to the task at hand. Under the direction of the National Park Service, Cumberland Homestead State Park would be an enormous undertaking. It would occupy over 1,700 acres of forest land. And at the center of it all, a 30-acre lake, which would be created by damming Bird Creek. Construction of the Bird Lake Dam began in 1935. Alvin C. York, the famous World War I hero would be the project superintendent. Using over 8,000 tons of concrete, it would become the largest masonry project ever undertaken by the Civilian Conservation Corps. The dam was faced with the same crab orchard sandstone as the homestead houses. In October of 1938, the first water was released over the dam. Bird Lake was complete and would become an ideal site for boating, fishing, and swimming. In 1938, the park was turned over to Tennessee, opening as Cumberland Mountain State Park on July 18, 1940. By 1941, 
The 3464th Company of the Civilian Conservation Corps had completed its work on the park, moving on to other projects and into America's memory. But the spirit of the CCC would live on in the permanent structures these young men created throughout the park. A gristmill, designed by Quakers, was built next to the dam to service local farms. The mill was never operational, but still stands as the Millhouse Lodge. A recreation lodge built by the CCC would provide a venue for music and included a restaurant. Bird Lake now had a beach where swimmers and sunbathers could enjoy the fresh mountain air. And in the post-World War II years, the good times would roll. A golden age of fun and recreation had dawned for Cumberland Mountain State Park. As decades passed, new generations of visitors would come to discover all the park had to offer. Its family-friendly atmosphere drew tourists from around the country. Today, Cumberland Mountain State Park is a year-round destination whose natural beauty is made new with each passing season. Its cozy cabins are fully furnished for vacations and weekend getaways. The park has expanded to include 14 miles of trails, attracting seasoned hikers and casual walkers alike. Kayaks, canoes and paddle boats are available to explore Bird Lake and Creek. For golfers, the Bear Trace at Cumberland Mountain is a premier 18-hole course designed by Jack Nicklaus. Guests can enjoy great food, friendly service and stunning views at the Homestead Harvest Restaurant. Cumberland Mountain State Park also manages Ozone Falls Natural Area, just 12 miles away, featuring a 110-foot waterfall, a swimming area, and untouched natural beauty. What began as a symbol of hope during desperate times became a stunning achievement for Tennessee, a bridge between generations past and those yet to come where old memories are kept and new ones created. Cumberland Mountain State Park, an enduring legacy of the Civilian Conservation Corps.